Coterminous, and there's a lot of circular argument, I think, in determining what is Dwaravati and therefore where is Dwaravati. So, if Dwaravati is an arch style, how do we how have we defined that style, and who has to find it? Actually, uh, the images, Buddha, Buddha, images of the Buddha, for the most part, also uh, Dharma chakra wheels, also. If, According to some, if they are Dwaravati, the Sema stones, there's a very rich legacy, both hands raised. So these are class, said to be classic Dwaravati style, and if we find one of these images anywhere, then we say that belonged to Dwaravati, or that area was Dwaravati. Again, that's, I think that's a circular argument. We're, we're defining the political form by art form, and I think that raises very many questions. That's from Nakhon Sawan down to the Gulf of Thailand. Its heartland seems to have been in Nakhon Patong and Utong, that is, the western side of the river. It was probably the leading polity, actually, I have to go ahead to when, so I'm talking about the 7th and 8th centuries, only six, perhaps 6th was the emergence, 7th and 8th centuries at the very, very longest period. Policies like Siteb and Prajinburi I would not un include under Dwaravati. Um, I think they were independent polities. It is possible that at, time they, at times they were vassals, uh, but in any case I'm sure that the balance of power was a shift in the phenomenon. Why were Siteb and why do I not think Siteb and Prajinburi were part of uh, Dwaravati? I think one reason is geography. They are located on different river systems, different trade routes, and they have their own hinterlands. Uh, Sitep is located in the Pasak Valley, separated from the Chopriya by mountains. It's a very old polity. The Sanskrit inscription found there was once described as the oldest Sanskrit inscription of Southeast Asia. And we don't really know what was the oldest inscription because most of the time the dates of the inscriptions have been effaced. So we cannot really say that the Bokan inscription, for example, in Champa, and again, the date of that. Uh, this is from an historical atlas. This is perhaps not an unrealistic idea of what Dwaravati might have been, but I think Chenla is a little bit uh, too big uh, for what we know. And of course, in those days, maps did not have, the countries did not have borders that went straight up to the border of the next country. That is a, that's a very recent descriptions and evidence, and if we want to go to a Mon art or Mon style in the Northeast, that is without doubt. And there seem to be several areas um, hard to work out. This doesn't really show the trade routes properly, but into the Chi Valley through Si Tape, actually. Si Tape has never had any Mon inscriptions discovered. We have only a, a Sanskrit, Pali, and uh, one, one or two Chinese on the back of the quoted so we don't really know the linguistic, uh, what languages were used in Sitev, and it might very well have been in Mon. Paravati means having many doors, which actually is, probably wasn't taken literally, uh, it, it was a reference to a sacred Indian city. Um, Dwaravati was, of course, first known in transliteration from Chinese sources at the end of the 19th, late, very late 19th, found in quite a number of uh, provinces. Now why do I say a medallion? There's always a debate, what are these? Are they medals, are they coins, are they coins? Well this 
Sri Dwaravati Shwara Punya, the, the merit of the Lord of Glorious Dwaravati, or the merit of the Glorious Lord Dwaravati, you can read it in either way. It, it refers to merit, Punya, which is a very important word in the old Mon inscriptions. Of course, it's an Indic loan word, but a large number of uh, the inscriptions we have referred to punya, which is of course part of the ideology of Buddhism of building uh, objects, building stupas, building viharas, building Buddhist images, and so on. That is done for punya. There's no problem with that ideology. But the problem is what is the function of these metals? Um, the ones that have been found have been excavated in connection with buildings. Most of them not really clearly. These ones were, however, other medallion, uninscribed medallions, and then the three ones at the bottom are inscribed. Um, this was Dwaravati on. In the lower Chopria Valley, the inscriptions have been found in three languages. Two of these are classical Indian languages, Bali and Sanskrit, and the third is Old Mon. The Old Mon inscriptions, there's a list knows that anyway, and I'll go into that. Uh, they come from six provinces, Nakon Patoms in the, in the central area, Nakon Patoms, Kanburi, Lokri, Saraburi, Taitani, and Nakon, so on. Most record dedications connected with Buddhism, dedications of Buddha images, or Mihara, and so on. They suggest that an elite, or pro probably the elite, was Mon, or that at least Mon seems to have been the preferred vernacular. As related to the secret instructions, um, as, as you know that I am an archaeologist, so that I will use archaeological evidence that usually never supported linguistic evidence. Literary and archaeological evidence has confirmed that central silence between the late 6th and 7th century was the homeland of an early Buddhist kingdom referred to in inscriptions as Kavarvati. In the 7th century, situated to the west of Isanakula and to the east of Sikasetra, the Chinese name for this civilization was interpreted as representing the Sanskrit word Kavarvati, meaning which has it. But it was not until 1964 that Uranakata and Khar is half the disciple of fertility. Our knowledge of the civilization expanded when Ogurio suggested that the people of Kavarvati were born. They just attributed the Hindu in 1959, Pierre Dupont convinced most scholars that Chuvalvati was indeed a great modern kingdom whose culture extended widely and came to embrace virtually the whole area of modern Thailand. Not long after that came the supposition that Chuvalvati formed part of a modern confederacy Center at the Tong in Lower Myanmar, though at the mouth of first millennium, war sites have recently identified in Lower Myanmar, such as Ayakata. But many questions still remain about how long sites were occupied and the overall deposition of cultural material. The first millennium AD war site that uh, identified the upper and lower Myanmar was supposed to be more site of until later. Thank you.